Hi everybody, this is Tanya Pizzolato of Shimmering Tarot. We have an unboxing to do today. The Trick or Treat Tarot. So let's ring in the bell, bring in the lovely energy. So let's get this plastic off. Here's the back. When black cats prowl and pumpkins gleam, shuffle the cards on Halloween. Welcome goblins and ghouls to the tarot deck of frights and fun, disguises and delights, divination and daring adventures. Featuring the irresistible illustrations of Jonathan Hunt and the expertise of best-selling author Barbara Moore, this Rider weight based deck is easy to use and includes an a full color guide for exploring the cards. Trick or Treat Tarot provides exactly what you need to confront fear, peer into the future, and create unique identity that suits you every day, not just on the spookiest night. Very cool. Ooh, I can't wait to see inside this. So the book's 216 pages, a nice, nice book. Barbara Moore always makes nice books. Oh. Nice uh, ribbon. So it's a magnetic uh, box. You can see the little two magnets. And a book to get this, a ribbon to get this book out and the deck. Ooh, look, it's Elvira in there. Or it looks a lot like Elvira. Very cool. this plastic off now we'll look at the book first but I just gotta get rid of the plastic cool the uh, backs skulls with green eyes fully reversible awesome So here's the companion book. Oh, she always has nice books, you know, with the nice uh, slick paper. <laughs> yeah, that would be a nightmare to me too, if I saw him. Oh, this is going to be a fun book. Introductions, basics, major arcana, minor arcana, wands, cups, swords, and pentacles. Spreads, and afterward by Mickey Mueller. So let's look at spreads. 203. Get a few looks before. The Empress, what's... Ah, uh, that's the basics. Oh, this is a gorgeous deck. There's Elvira. Spreads. Here you can uh, pause this and read it. Here, uh, uh, put this in ways so you can pause and read it if you feel like it. So this would be the trick or treat uh, spread. The haunted house spread. Oh. Message from the, messages from the other side spread. Hope I'm giving you enough time to pause to pause and read it if you want. 
Gathering the harvest bread. Yes, it is that time. Basic spreads. Spreads with dramatic effect. Yes no, or no air oracle. Okay, there's no pages. Okay. There's more to read and you can pause. Make sure there was nothing in between, nope. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy reading this. All these spreads. Artwork is gorgeous. Okay, let's look at the deck. Ooh, this is gorgeous. This is, I love this time of year. Oops, left a few behind. Definitely don't want to do that. The fool, the fool, the fool has the black cat for a loyal uh, sidekick. How exciting. Oh, the magician manifesting all the cards, flying the... All that energy he's put into work, manifesting what he wants. The High Priestess. Let me get this a little bit clearer. Nope. Why is it not that clear? Oh, there we go. On the little blue is uh, a little bit in her crystal ball there. She's got a pomegranate. So here's the, her, the card, the strongest in intuition, the keeper of secret knowledge, which we all do. The empress. Oh, look, she's a kangaroo. How perfect, you know, because she's, she's the ultimate mother. And look, there is her little baby in her pocket that she puts them in. She creates babies, human or animal, uh, plants, All she creates all life. She is mother nature in all ideas and all creativity. The emperor, the ultimate father figure and this being a trick or treat deck, yes, it would be the king of pumpkin town. Yes, I'm thinking of Jack Skellington. You know, with his pumpkin head. Usually goes around with a skull head, but he has a pumpkin head too. Even put a skull head right there. Oh, how cool. So the ultimate leader, the ultimate father. It's when you feel you're most in charge in your power. The Hierophant. Here's your Aries card. This, the hair fan is, can be a priest, a teacher. It doesn't have to be a priest, but you know, that position, you know, if spiritual leading, whether it's a high priestess, a minister, whatever. They're very uh, traditional, 
sometimes in the shadow side they can be the tradition can be abusive and they love oh look at this this is a very different looking but so got the feeling of Morticia and Gomez Adams the lovers here's your Gemini card my dad's a Gemini choices and values and love and boy do I think of uh, love when I see Gomez and Morticia Adams the chariot your cancer card <laughs> it looks like the cat in the hat this is about willpower and usually the driver is the one with the willpower in making his horses or these two little kids ride the way they want, making everybody work together. The strength, here's your Leo card. This is a very old looking line with horns instead of a mane. This is about inner strength, not outward strength. Being comfortable inside is who you are. Not comparing your insides to other people's outsides. And it's a calm, assertive energy. Animals respond so beautifully to this energy. It's a great, having this energy, people feel very comfortable around you. And animals especially. It's a great energy to have to train animals. The Hermit. Well, that was the Leo card, by the way. The strength card is the Leo. I think I said that. Hermit is the Virgo card, which is my sign and V11 crystal signs. And uh, number nine is my life path number. And this is all about looking inside instead of outward for answers. Spending time by yourself. Finding what's right for you. The Wheel of Fortune. Now this is about good karma and bad karma. When you're on top of the wheel, which we don't have, it's not really showing a wheel, it's showing a whole bunch of candy flying. So that seems like really good karma to me. You got candy coming to you. But on the top you're in good karma, on the bottom you're in bad. Over here you're going up, you're going down, wanting to be at up top. Here is Justice. This is the Libra card. My mom is a Libra. About truth, law, fairness. So we got Lady Liberty and a rich baron guy. Oh, here is the hangman. This is about getting a different perspective on things, self-sacrifice. He looks like Eddie Munster. Or just any vampire. I don't know. He's, he's reminding me of Eddie Munster. He doesn't have the shorts on. Death. This is your Scorpio card, which my uncle is. This is about, it can be about literal physical death. And which is usually a very good thing, you know. You're old and you're like done with this life. And you're ready to go on to a different form. A spirit. Or maybe reincarnate, whatever it is. It's also about, you know, just transformation. You know, like a caterpillar to chrysalis and then to a butterfly. And also people have many transformations throughout their life. You know, maybe they overcome drug addiction, uh, shopping addiction, gambling, whatever. But, you know, totally transform our lives inside and out. Temperance. Here is um, Sagittarius. This is one of the my most favorite cards. Because we're all wanting to be in perfect moderation and balance in this universe. So this is, to me, the ultimate what we want to be. And look, the, it just goes back and forth, just so balanced. Never overfills. 
Okay, here's our Capricorn card. This is a very cool looking devil. We don't have our little people here. We got a spider web with twinkle lights behind her. Very cool. So this is about, you know, e your egotism, self-centeredness, um, vices. Usually there's two little people with uh, loose chains around the neck that they can pick up anytime and take off their necks and, and leave this behind. It's anytime you can leave any of these bad behaviors behind. You don't have to keep with it. Even though she makes it look so fun, she's like tempting you, like, come on, have fun with me, have some alcohol, have some drugs, whatever it is you want. Oh, this reminds me of Herman Munster, the tower. This is your chaos, upheaval, turmoil. A lot of times we make it so much worse on ourselves because we hold on for dear life, not wanting things to change. But a lot of times with this change comes enlightenment. And if you go with the flow, you know, learn to relax a little bit, the change can be so much easier. The star. She reminds me of Glinda the Good Witch. I know her ne dress needs to be longer and bigger, but it makes me think of her from Wizard of Oz. So Alice Cooper is a uh, Aquarius. So is my Martha from Mystical Empowerments. And so is my favorite princess in the whole world, Princess Fiona from the Cincinnati Zoo. I can't believe for all these years I did not realize. I never thought about her date in her... Uh, Zodiac sign, her astrology sign, being an Aquarius. And I spent my birthday with her and my husband at the Cincinnati Zoo. Oh, had so much fun. The moon, Pisces. This is my mama's, my mother-in-law's sign. And usually there's a domesticated dog and a wolf over here and a lobster up here. This is about intuition hidden things, cycles, female cycles too, and um, your subconscious. The sun, this is the ultimate bliss card. And they always have sunflowers. I love that she's dressed as a sunflower. And a cake with bats, oh, it's precious. So this is the ultimate bliss, victory. Things feeling so great. And a really easy way to think of what the light side is and the shadow side is think of, you know, going outside in the sun and how good it feels. And then think about spending too much time in the sun and getting a sunburn. And that uh, peeling and, uh, you know, when it peels, it also uh, makes like little bubbles of loose skin until it starts peeling. And it's just painful when someone touches you that's the shadow side so there's the a reason for moderation in everything judgment this is about changing learning things experiences and epiphanies to your final self and having firm boundaries in, in set in play And here's the world card. I love it. Peace, dude. This is you've experienced the whole journey of the fool. Sit back and enjoy all the transformations you've had. Look at all the hard work you've done and appreciate it because soon you're going to be on another journey. We go through many journeys in our lifetime. Ace of Wands. I like to think of a business to explain these. Here in the ACE, we got an idea, an inspiration for our business. So we're starting to think about this. Here in number two of the ACE of Wands, the two of the Wands, we have put plans into action. We're still in our house. We're making plans and putting them into action. She's got two brains to work on it on the tip of each wand. So she's got a zombie business. 
Three of Wands, we go out of the house to actually see our ships coming in and delivering some of our successes to us. See, he got spooky things like a eyeball hanging out, some pumpkins on swords. Now on the Four of Wands, we're coming back home to celebrate party time. And we maybe getting engaged, married, and it looks like they're having a baby shower. They're celebrating the new baby. They already have an older one. Two-year-old there looks like five. Here's you competing for business or Olympics. And whoever is the most skilled, trained the best, and has the most natural ability, best offer is going to win. But you can see they're ser seriously competing with each other. Six of Wands, home comes the victor of that battle. And everyone's cheering you on. And your horse is even dressed up. Everybody's like, yay, you! Seven of Wands. This is where you, they're like, now they're jealous. They want to be you. whack a mummy <laughs> So now you have to take one of these wands and draw a line in the ground and uh, say, hey, these are my boundaries. Back off. You can do, you can do it too. Find your niche and uh, do it. Eight of wands. Here's where answers are coming quick. Quick little trip, flying trips. Like the bats. Nine of Wands, you're getting tired, but you've got plenty to get you through the, your suit. Plenty of energy still to accomplish all that you've got to. Here you're putting on every single thing in the world on your back. Even though you're carrying the front, it's actually can physically damage your back by doing too much. And your shoulders and your neck, very big strains. So... This is saying, hey, ask your family for help for you know, the mundane things around the house because you can't do every single thing. And give people some mundane task at work so you can do the real serious things that you got to get done. And thank everybody for all their help. The Page of Wands makes me think of uh, 13 Reasons Why. When he takes that girl out to the movies and ki they kiss... And he has an orgasm in his pants. It's that youthful, inexperienced, but lust, you know? And you don't have to be young to have that youthful energy. You can be 100 years old and have that youthful energy. Knight of Wands. Now, this guy or girl is so charming. They'll charm you right out of your panties or pants and make you feel really good. And this queen is so vibrant. She always has her little cat. She's the social belle of the party. She's vibrant, exciting to be around. And the king, now he's, he's the ultimate rock star. This is Alice Cooper for me. Even though he's in Aquarius, he's um, just older and ch incredibly charming and sexy and But absolute rock star. Ace of Cups, your heart is open and ready and overflowing with emotion. Look how cute. Two, here you have met a special someone or you're going to meet a special someone, Romeo and Juliet forever. It also could be a great friendship or a great business partner. But most of the times, it's love. Three of Cups, this is your soul tribe. Oh my God, this totally looks like Pocus Pocus, Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Parker Jr. So this is your soul tribe, who you party with, who you cry on their shoulders. And in the shadow side, this could be someone cheating on you. Four of Cups, this is apathy. Look at that little kid inside that costume. I mean, they got all these candies, and they're still not excited. Just apathy, just nothing. 
So take a moment, meditate, whatever you gotta do, breathe in and out slowly, and get up and enjoy yourself. Do something. Eat a piece of candy and go trick or treat some more. Go to a party. Five of Cups, always conflict and tension. So this is the bereavement card, also been known to be called Don't Cry Over Spilled Milk. So three cups are spilled here, and this is what's making you cry. But look, you still have two cups upright with their contents. You have great things in your life still. So don't cry over the, you know, experience your feelings and then move on. Six of Cups, this is your nostalgic card with a joker in it. So this could be running into an ex, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, or it could be you're in a new relationship, but you're not uh, letting yourself move on and enjoy this new relationship with this person because you're still thinking about an ex or fantasizing about a crush, whatever. Pick your poison, Seven of Cups. I like that. We got a little Tinkerbell here. She's got so many uh, things in front of her to pick, to choose from. And you must choose. Don't let the world choose for you, because always kick yourself in the butt if you let the world choose. And there's some things based in reality, some things in fact, some things in uh, um, fantasy. You know, like jewels and pearls, which you can have, but not all everything at once. One's a home, shows your castle, which no matter what kind of home it is, it is your castle. And the spirit, there's all kinds of choices, so many opportunities. Eight of Cups, you realize the relationship is not working because you're dating a doofus who wears his underwear on the outside. Only Superman can get away with this. Could be a girl too, whatever. But you both know this relationship's not working and you're just not gonna put each other through a war anymore. You're like, I'm, I'm going over here. We both agree this relationship over. I'm gonna go be with the pumpkin. Ooh, mermaid, nine of cups. This is make your wish card because er your wishes are gonna be granted. You can be happy and content. Ten of Cups, this is your happy family. And look, it's Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz with the Tin Man, the Lion, and um, the Scarecrow. Where is Toto? I see the flying monkeys. They're little ornaments. I can't get to them. I would like to see Toto. So your happy family can look like anything, like Dorothy with her, her posse here. It could be... You just by yourself, it could be because some people like to be alone. It could be you with a husband, a wife, multiple husbands and wives. And it could be with human children, dog children, cat children, all those. Th it's just whatever your happy family looks like. Page of Cups. This is your messenger. And here's a little fish that bringing you the message and needs to get back in the cup. Oh, he's on a little fishing cook. He brings you messages of love or all kinds of messages. I was just like him thinking of him whispering love messages in your ear. The Knight of Cups, this is your Prince Charming or Princess Charming, Knight in Shining Armor. They are in love with love. Queen of Cups emotionally nurturing even being that green she is and her cup is full she is ready for love look her and the king are both facing forward they're bright here in the present and he's green too this king is very comfortable in him being himself he's a great listener will give you advice if you want advice he's also so comfortable you could be talking shit about him and it'll just roll off his shoulder he knows who he is you will not affect him 
Ace of Swords. You have a new way of seeing or learning or knowing things. And you're just so inspired. It's like this, everything is illuminated for you. Two Swords. This is your indecision card. You don't want to make a decision. So you've got your eyes covered and arms with the swords crossed saying, I don't want to know. I don't want to use. You got to. Now this is early in the numerology, the threes. So your, your pumpkin has been smushed or stabbed or your heart. And where it's really hurting the most is in your head. It's just agonizing. You're thinking about it constantly and crying over this. But it, you know, whatever the situation is, it will be resolved later. Right now, you just got to feel the pain and get on with your life, enjoying yourself. Either you guys will make up or not make up. It could be romance, friends, whatever. But remember, it's early in the neurology. Four, here's rest and recuperation. And it's a vampire, so he has to rest and recuperate in his coffin. Five of Swords. Okay, now this is a very serious conflict when it's the swords. You, the, see this little yellow crayon? You've really gotten into his head. It's like you chopped his head off. He is in his head and maybe sees you in a whole new light now and doesn't like the person you are. Or that's you about them. Whichever way. But this is a fight that pretty much can end things. I love the Six of Swords. This is about leaving troubled waters behind and going to freedom to smooth the waters. And it looks like this is the River Styx. Seven of Swords. Okay, it looks like he's sneaking off with the swords. He could be stealing them. He also could be um, a, a plan, a stealthy plan. Whatever army he's working for, get the their weapons away from them. I like to think of, a, you know, say you're with an, an abusive relationship and you're leaving your husband or wife, whoever's the abuser. You can't, if they're an abuser, you can't just tell them. Use, they're usually crazy if you try to tell them, and that's usually when they'll kill you. So you have to sneak away when they're not around. Or drug them to sleep. Don't do, don't do that. Don't drug them. But you have to do it when they're not around. You have to leave and never come back. Sneak, sneak things out of the house slowly and leave, and don't tell your friends or family where you are. Call them here and there short calls say I don't want to be found that's what me and my mom did eight of swords now this this mummy's feeling all tied up but you can see look at his bandages they're loose and these swords are no way going to keep him trapped in this little circle you can walk right through so what's really going on he's trapped in his mind or she is so have to take a moment, think things out, calm down, do some yoga breathing to relax yourself so you can think things through and you can get out. Nine of Swords, nightmares, anxiety, depression. She's like, oh my God, you're hideous. Take that outfit off. Alice Cooper. I love my Alice Cooper. I know, but he reminds me with the swords and the top hat. He usually has a skull on his buckle. He has a knife in his pocket that he likes to th throw at things. He loves throwing. He's very accurate at throwing the knife. Yeah, just like that. Right into heart. Or right on your nose picture. A picture with whoever he's throwing the knife at. So this is... This is the stabbed in the back betrayal card, which Alice Cooper would never do to anybody. And, but you as this poppet are like, okay, I've learned my lesson. I'm moving on. I'm out of here. I'm not going to be your stabbing poppet anymore. 
page of swords. So this person is so excited. They're young or you have the youthful energy. You could be old with youthful energy. And they're so excited about their journey of learning new things or communicating or being a speech writer, whatever. Knight of Swords. This is the fastest knight in the deck. They're very skilled at their trade. So they just rush in and do their job. They don't have to think about it. They just do. The Queen of Swords, she is so cool, so fierce. Great friend, smart and quick-witted. And she's always there for her friends. Don't think of her as a cold bitch. She's just a person who feels her feelings. And if she's not feeling particularly happy in the moment, she expresses that. You know, you can see her not smiling. And a lot of times people are telling girls, don't, or do smile, put a smile on your face. Well, you know, if I don't feel like smiling, I'm not going to. King of Swords. Now, here is the older, mature person, which could be on a young person. They have the older, mature attitude and look at life. And they're incredibly smart and eloquently spoken. Ah, Ace of Pentacles. A pumpkin is perfect for a pentacle. So here's the universe saying, yes, you're on your journey of whatever, of health, fitness, uh, career, money making. And I want to help you, push you along. So here is the two of pentacles. You're, you're learning to balance your life, your time. You've got the ships balancing on the waves. So you get up in the morning, brush your teeth, you go exercise, go home, shower, get dressed, go off to work or school, come home, spend some time with your family. You're learning to balance everything into your life to have a healthy, happy life. Three of Pentacles, this is your apprentice. Collaboration, teamwork. So we got a fairy, a witch, and a Dracula all working together on a scarecrow. Four of Pentacles, this is your hoarding card. Oh, and this is the Buddha guy. I forget what, he's, what his name is. Oh, that looks like a papillion, the little doggy. This, so the guy is just wanting to hoard, hold on to everything. He not put some in the bank for retirement, some in the bank for near future things like uh, your car breaks down, um, a year off from work if you lose your job. You know, uh, short-term savings is the third pentacle. And this one is paying your bills every month and a 10% of your salary tithing for charity and some money for you have to fund because you've got to have a little fun. You cannot be all work and no play. Five of Pentacles, always conflict of tension. And this is about poverty, spiritual poverty, um, feeling isolated even though you have your sidekick with you. And they're looking, but they're not seeing that this house, there's people home, the lights are on. Knock on the door, ask for help. Six of Pentacles. This is giving and taking uh, card. This werewolf is giving, and these kids are so happy to get the candy. And here is Elvis in the Seven of Pentacles. This is not instant gratification card. And later life of his life, he had instant gratification all the time. But you know, think of harvest. You know, you got to plant your seeds, you got to water, you got to weed them. You got to take care of your plans so you can take them to market and get your money. Eight of Pentacles, the mastery of your skills. Oh, 101 Dalmatians. Well, you we don't see 101 in this little card. And there's du Cruella. Here is uh, Elvira, the Nine of Pentacles. This is your luxury card. And she always has her bird with her. It's usually a hawk or falcon. I think that the falcon hawking is the same bird. Some luxury, taking a vacation that you've earned and enjoying it. Oh, this so is the monsters. Look here. 
We got Herman, Marilyn, Lily, Eddie, and Grandpa. So this is your family legacy card. This can be a, a trust fund, a inheritance someone has left you. It could be you saving your money for retirement. It could also be, uh, because remember, Pentacles is not just money, health. So it could be uh, your genes that have been passed on are great health, great genes. Healthy, 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 or not so healthy. Also, it could be a family legacy of abuse that you have ended. You've ended and cut ties and gone through therapy and healed. And so you're, you have changed that line of the legacy into a healthy one. Page of Pentacles. The page is always so excited by, you know, it's got that youthful energy and this page is selling Sherbert brains. Enterprising young rabbit who is so into selling the Sherbert brains. He's like, I'm going to make get rich with these. Knight of Pentacles. Okay, this is the slowest knight in the deck. Smart, very skilled, but Pentacles, they like, you know, to earth signs, think things through, analyze things. So this knight thinks everything through, looks at all the pathways and chooses what's best for themselves and for their families. The Queen of Pentacles, total nurturer. She loves taking care of her family, to cleaning, cooking, bringing home the bacon, and always finds time for herself to have some fun, have a little treat like this little pentacle cookie. King of Pentacles. <laughs> I love this King of Pentacles. He's enjoying sitting, he's sitting home after a long day of work, enjoying all the gold he's made. This look at this gorgeous gold pentacle I made. It could be Bill Gates or Steve Jobs when he was alive. They're so good at doing their job, creating things. Well, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Let's give it a quick little uh, shuffle. So it shuffles easily. It's, you know, one of the regular decks, not too terribly thin, you know. It's on the thin side like a regular Rider, Rider Waite Smith deck. The book is really nice. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Let's pick a quick card to say goodbye with. The Devil. So don't give in to temptations. You know, yes, enjoy yourself. Have fun on Halloween. Enjoy your Samhain, but also remember, moderation. Don't let the devil take over. Don't go berserk. Enjoy it as much, but be careful. So give this, a th this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope you're doing well, taking care of yourself and your families. Send you lots of loves, kisses and hugs, and many blessings to all of you. Happy Halloween and happy Samhain. Bye, everybody.